Another name floating around in the discussion to be Texas A&M's next head football coach is Mike Elko. I don't know if I love the thought of him coaching the Aggies. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on into Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. So today, we're going to talk about a few more candidates for the head coach position at Texas A&M. A name that I've seen float around a ton and I think you could argue now, you know, we're a, about a day removed from Coach Fisher being let go, is Mike Elko. I think he is kind of the guy it feels like everybody thinks is going to get the job. And when I, I look at Mike Elko, okay, we're going to have a back and forth conversation on this. So once again, another day, a lot of people have been interacting in the comments, which I really appreciate. It helps the show and it's great to have back and forth um, conversation, whether you agree with me, disagree. I'll tell you if I agree, disagree with you and have back and forth. That's what this is all about. But Mike Elko, you know, he ties Texas and He was the DC and he goes to Duke and he takes a horrible Duke football team and he turns it around quick. Something though about something about the thought of Mike Elko being the head coach, I, I just can't get excited about it. When you have names like, you know, we, we, I talked about the Dan Lanning. I know I have Oregon fans up in arms about that. I've even discussed Dan Lanning, um, which is funny. But, you know, Dan Lanning is a name where who everyone is floating around associating with this job. Will he get it? Will he take the phone call? I don't know, but he, he is going to be discussed. Um, a guy like Mike Norvell. We're going to break down Mike Norvell on today's show. Another guy, those hires to me are just much more exciting than Mike Elko. I mean, I know what he's done at Duke is impressive. It is. It's impressive taking that program from here. And if you gave – and so what I want to see is a coach who has proven they can take a program from here and get it all the way up to we're competing for a natty. We're competing for – uh, ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, which is not going to be a thing anymore, but championships. So, you know, Mike Elko, and listen, he's had some some things go against him. His quarterback goes down. Uh, Riley Leonard, I know he's been in and out of the lineup, banged up with, I think it was an ankle sprain. Great football player, Leonard is. But, um, you know, he, he's been banged up, and, and that's hurt Elko. But one thing we've learned from Texas A&M football is you are going to have your quarter, your starting quarterback – is going to get hurt because that's just what happens. Seems to happen every single year. So you got to find a way to win football games regardless. Um, and, you know, and once again, I mean, look at Duke's schedule. And I know and I don't – I want to add the caveat that Duke, you know, Leonard has been banged up. But you start the year off with the bang with a, a big victory over Clemson. I think that Clemson team was a little bit overrated at the time. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It was a big win for Duke and for Coach Elko. You beat Lafayette. I don't even I don't even know where. Is that in Louisiana? I don't even know where that school is located. Beside the point. Um, you beat Northwestern. Once again, not a good football team. And you beat UConn, who I'm pretty sure is like the worst team in college football. And then you lose to Notre Dame at home. You beat NC State. Good win there. NC State's a good football team. Good win. And did Riley Leonard play in that one? Let's see. He did not. So, once again, impressive, or unless he went, he went in that. But that, that's an impressive win, knowing you were without Leonard. Then you get boat raced by Florida State. I don't know about boat race. Lose by 18. But you lose, lose, lose to Florida State. In that game, once again, um, Leonard was in the lineup for that one. You then get 
put up a goose egg with Riley Leonard in the lineup against Louisville. And then you beat Florida State by three points. And then you hang with North Carolina. You hang with North Carolina, 45-47, lose that game. You've got two winnable games. Um, I think they'll beat Virginia, and I think they'll beat Pitt and finish the year 8-4. and four. But what I'm getting at here, and this is kind of what I'm saying is, my, and I want this to be back and forth discussion. We're going to, you know, Elko, this is not going to be the final discussion we have on Mike Elko. And you can make both sides. I think um, he's proven he can recruit in the SEC. He's um, got ties with Texas a and I, th- I think he's a great defensive mind. There's a lot of positives. I like his – he seems like a player's coach. His players love him. It's hard not to love Mike Elko. I mean, truly, he gets me fired up. I really enjoy him when you know he was on college game day. I, I, I'm, I'm a big Elko fan. Will he succeed in the job? I don't know. And I think this right now, this is your window. You know, you got to go right now and – uh, get in hot, make a splash higher that is going to compete. Um, maybe not next year, but compete for college football playoff appearances with the resources you have. You can't bring in another Jimbo Fisher. Who's going to come in and go eight and four or nine and three or seven and five. It can't happen with all the talent that you have and the resources you have that cannot happen. And to me, Mike Elko, could he be awesome? Could he be a great coaching hire? Yes, he could. There's a world where he comes in. Like I said, I still think that if there were a betting odds, which I think some places do that, I'll have to check that out. But I bet Elko would be, you know, the the minus money candidate. So, <clears throat> but looking at it, I just don't know if that hire gets me excited. I had someone comment, actually, ironically, on yesterday's episode and say that when I was talking about the hot board and say, yeah, Elko doesn't really get me, doesn't get me fired up. Um, and I said, we'll talk about it tomorrow. And I kind of agree. I don't, I, I'm not saying that I'm going to, you know, throw something at a wall if they hire Mike Elko. I'm not. I, he could succeed. He could. He could be great. Will he succeed? I don't know. Will So he, the name is, is going to be brought up. It's, it's going to float around. He's going to be in this discussion. But, and then once again, you add the caveat of some of these coaches that you're going to want to go after are going to be like Norvell are going to be competing for national championships going to be playing football till whenever the day after the, the natty. And that is going to have a serious effect on recruiting and transfer portal and all that. So does that, is that another reason you lean toward Elko could be, but once again, I just think that there are more candidates available that get me more excited than Elko that I think you could go get. Is Dan Lanning possible? Not sure. You know, it, 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 could you go get him? Don't know, but I, I'd rather have him than Elko. I think I'd rather have Mike Norvell. I think there's a handful more coaches I would rather have than Elko. But once again, if, if Elko is the guy, we're going to support him. We're going to have his back. And we're going to, you know, I, I believe that he can, he can, he can have success. But I just think that there are better candidates available. And seeing that Elko kind of seems to be the, the favorite right now has me a little concerned because I just I don't know if I believe, I fully believe, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that if you know if he does get the job, I, I'm hoping and praying I'm wrong and that he takes this program to the top. But I just think there's other candidates that could do that could would do a better job than Elko. So let me know in the comments what y'all think on this discussion. Is is Mike Elko a guy you would want? Is Mike Elko someone that you would um, be happy to see coaching the Aggies? Let me know in the comments. Next, we're going to talk about Glenn Schumann and Mike Norvell and the potential of bringing them in to be the next head coach at Texas A&M. We'll discuss that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, we have got to talk about our wonderful friends over at Jace Medical. Jace Medical is the most interesting new company I've seen in a long time because they are in the business of keeping you and your family safe through whatever's going on. They came about during uh, COVID, and what it is is it's a it's kind of a product where you they give you some antibiotics in their Jace case that can help you in a pinch, whatever's going on. You have these antibiotics that can help you in a pinch. It comes with directions, what to use, when to use it. You can contact them and ask them questions about what to use, when to use. 
it, it, I love that. And I also love their other product, which is the is Jace Daily. Jace Daily offers you your daily medications that you take on a day-to-day basis. You can go and check their website to see if they offer the medication you need, but they will offer you a supply of it. They will offer you a year supply of it. So that's what happens. Uh, the pharmacy's late on giving you your medicine. There's you're going on vacation and you forgot and you forgot to get a refill, things like that. You have the peace of mind knowing you have your daily medications. If you or someone you love would get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. So the next guys we are going to talk about are Glenn Schumann, the co-DC at over at um, Georgia, and then Mike Norvell, who is, of course, the head coach at Florida State. So we'll start talking a little bit about Glenn Schumann. This is what CBS Sports wrote about the co-defensive coordinator of the Dogs. He said, it's hard to believe at age 33, Schumann already has 14 years of experience in the SEC as a student assistant, graduate assistant, and assistant coach in various stints at Alabama and Georgia. Along with Will Muschamp, he is currently running the Georgia defense and has been a part of national champion, part of six national championships. Is he ready to run an SEC program? I think, I think Glenn Schumann is the type of hire you make, a young coach, the type of hire you make if you want to be the next person to succeed off of the Nick Saban, Kirby Smart coaching tree. Glenn Schumann is going to be a coach, a head coach in the SEC sooner than later. Is it at Texas A&M? Is it somewhere else? Does he get a start in another conference? Still to be seen. But one thing I trust is the coaching tree of Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. How many times have we seen it pay off? How many times have we seen the coaching tree of these guys go different places and have success it, time and time again. And that's why I look at Glenn Schumann and I go, it might not be once again, kind of like Elko. It's not the most exciting name. It's not the Dan Lanning. It's not that name that gets you really fired up. But Glenn Schumann is a guy who I think could be an absolute grand slam hire if you you – Pull the trigger, you bring him in, and he he is great. He's proven he can recruit. He's proven that he can coach one of the best defenses in college football. And he's done it for a few years now. He's young. He's been around college football for a very long time at two of the uh, – Alabama and Georgia, two historic programs that are two of the best programs over the last 10, 15, 20 years with you know the recent success of Georgia and the long sustained success of Alabama. So Schumann is a guy – I you know I want to talk a little bit longer on Mike Norvell, but Schumann is a guy that I do think should be in the conversation. Once again, let me know in the comments what y'all think about Schumann taking the job. Is he a candidate? Is he someone that that would excite you? Would it not excite you? Um, and you know where where does that excite you compared to like a Mike Elko? And let me know the thoughts there. I think it's more it's it's that would be the more risky shot here, but I think if it, if it hit, it would be an absolute home run. Mike Norvell, what I like about Mike Norvell, first of all, he's a Texas native. What else I like about Mike Norvell is that look at his start at Florida State. It was not great. But he laid, you know, he he what he did was he continued to recruit at the high level, recruit at the high level, and it eventually led to wins. Success in the transfer portal, like going and getting a Keon Coleman. Look what that's done. The former, tra- uh, you know, he was at Michigan State. Now he's at Florida State, or it could be like a th- first round pick in the NFL draft. Probably likely will be. That is what Mike Norvell has done. He took the program, a couple rough years, some growing pains. It wasn't great. And now they're number four, I believe, and they're competing for a national championship. And I, I mean, I don't know who, who, who are they going to lose to? You know, like, so. Mike Norvell, I think, is another great candidate for this head coaching job Um, because he's proven that he can take talent and turn that into success on the field, wins, NFL products, 
all that. Now, some might say, oh, do we want another Florida State coach? That's a little – That's I've seen that floating around Aggie Twitter. But I think Mike Norvell, to me, is right up there with Dan. Would he leave? I don't know. Um, when, you know, and, and I, I'm getting a lot of people – you know, I add this caveat. I mean, a lot of people in the comments, which once again, you're welcome to comment whatever you want to comment. Um, but, you know, commenting, he's not going to leave here and there. Is Dan Lanning or is Mike Norvell going to leave their spots now to go to Texas a I don't know. I, you know, I don't. But what I do know is that their names are floating around. So we're going to discuss them here at Locked on Aggies. So, you know, that, that's what we're doing. Um, so you're welcome to yell at me. <laughs> yeah, if you if you don't think your coach is going to come to Texas a and but if he's on a hot board, I'm going to talk about him. Simple as that. So Mike Norvell on the hot board, talented coach. I like what he's done. Once, I mean, and that's what is so key. What what I've wanted to see is a coach who has who has recruited at a high level, be able to turn the recruits, turn the four and five stars into success, and that is what Mike Norvell has done last year, and then of course this year at Florida State. And he's building something quickly. I think he could build something even quicker at Texas A&M, just based on the current roster, based on the recruits, based on the money he's going to have. I think you could see that play out. So Mike Norvell, once again, is is another big time candidate for this job, who I think would succeed. I would be very excited if Mike Norvell got this head coaching job. So let's read what they have written down for Mike Norvell on CBS Sports. They say, Texas A&M went after one coach who turned around the FSU. Why not two? Norvell seems to be in the same class as Lanning. Um, There's too much to play for the season. And would uh, would Texas A&M potentially be willing to wait until January 9th to make their hire? Should Norvell lead his team to a college football national championship? Norvell is native of Irving, Texas, less than 200 miles from College Station. So, you know, same discussion as a Lanning is, will they be playing football until the 9th? That's That's a big conversation in this, and it's something that will be discussed but um, Mike Norvell is a guy who will be discussed in this coaching search and I think would be an absolute home run hire for the Aggies. We are going to talk about why a and could be the best job available this offseason and why people have got to understand the relevance of this Texas a and coaching job. We'll talk about those two points coming up right here at Locked on Aggies. First, we're going to talk about our wonderful friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs is a tool I use um, if I, you know, looking for new writers, looking for different things like that for what I do, you know, LinkedIn Jobs helps. It's a great, easy to use, convenient service that I've been using for many years. It's helped me get jobs. I love it. I love it. It helps employers find employees and employees find jobs. That is what I love about LinkedIn Jobs. It's just a convenient service that wants to help you succeed. You got to go check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So before we call it a day here over at locked on Aggies, I do want to talk about why, you know, I I'm trying to get through to some folks, you know, and to understand the relevance of this coaching job. Someone who I really respect, and I I talked about this yesterday, and people don't seem to get it. Um, And it was something Josh Pate said about the relevance of this Texas A&M job. What coaches need to succeed as in college football, Texas A&M can give to them better than many, many, many schools in the SEC and the Big Ten and the ACC in every conference college football. Texas A&M can give coaches what they need to win national championships. The previous coach just didn't take advantage of it. At, at the end of the day, um, and you know, and I've got the whole Saban thing, you can't buy players. Well, you can buy players if you have the coaching staff to coach them up and succeed with the talent. Coach Fisher didn't do that. He had the talent. He didn't have the coaching skills needed to do anything with the talent that he had. 
So I think this AM job is going to be the most attractive job in college football in this offseason. I mean, the, the people that, you know, we saw the um, Mississippi State guy get fired, Arnett get fired, Sam Pittman could be next, Houston job, um, Michigan State job, I, I'm AM's, you're taking AM over all those jobs. The only one that could be, I think, in the conversation. And then if there's some crazy hire, you know, firing, that's a different discussion. But um, if they fire Napier over at Florida, I think that would be the only job that you could argue is right there, maybe a little bit above Texas A&M, but I still would, you know, I still lean to the side of Texas A&M things there. Um, but this job is just so, it's so attractive to coaches because of, and it's, we talked about, um, I've seen a lot of people saying Kiffin's not going to be a candidate for this job, which is fine. You know, we might still talk about him some here and we'll see how that plays out. But at the end of the day, um, the reason I bring up the name Kiffin right now is because of, what he's kind of, you know, his, what he said about Texas A&M in the past of like, you know, he's kind of, you know, hated on Jimbo because I think he's kind of like in his head, like, man, if I had this talent, I'd be winning national championships. And Jimbo is just not taking advantage of what he's, what he's being given. That's what I'm talking about. College football coaches recognize and understand what Texas A&M has to offer to coaches. And what that is, is, is really good football players, really good backing, recruiting money. I mean, they can offer what not a lot of other places can. And that is why Texas A&M, and I get it. I get people that people that want to, you know, make fun of Texas A&M, which is fair. You know, Texas A&M hasn't won as much as they should with all they've had. But it just, I, I just don't think they've had the right guy. And that's why. This coaching search is is going to make or break this football program. If you make the right hire, Texas A&M will be competing for national championships. I mean, okay, so let me let me throw let me throw a um a hypothetical a hypothetical out there to y'all. If if you have uh, right now if Texas A&M if when you brought in Jimbo Fisher and obviously I know um that when that was, you know, Mike Norvell was not really where he is coaching and <clears throat> Dan Lanning as well. But if when you brought in Jimbo Fisher, you brought instead, you brought in today's Dan Lanning, um, Mike Norvell, those guys, would Texas A&M be competing for national championships right now? I think the answer is a resounding yes. And that's what I'm getting at. So, I mean, you know, I, I think, I think I just made a solid point. And that's what I'm saying is coach Fisher wasn't the right hire. He didn't get the job done. He didn't succeed. It happens. It was a bad decision. LinkedIn jobs, you know, they don't let you make a bad hire. We just talked about LinkedIn, but at the end of the day, if you don't lose, use LinkedIn jobs, sometimes you're going to make the wrong hire at, at your business. That's what Texas A&M did with Jimbo Fisher. He was the wrong guy, and we saw why. If you hire the right guy this time, Texas A&M will succeed. It's simple as that. They will succeed. They will have years where the four high four and high five star recruits turn into wins of the football field. It will happen. And that is what I'm getting at, ladies and gentlemen. That is what I'm getting at. If you make the right hire, Texas A&M will be one of the best programs in college football history. If you disagree with me, if you think I'm delusional, I, that's okay. I can accept that. I can understand that. But I think I think people are delusional to not understand the ceiling of this program if you make the right hire with the backing and the resources the coach will have, it is through the roof. And that is what, for a couple of days, I've been trying to get through um, to people, to listeners. You know, because obviously right now we have a lot of non-Aggie um, fans tuning in to Locked on Aggies, which, well, once again, thank you all so much for being here, um, listening to me, talking about this coaching church. I really do appreciate it. It helps me out a ton, and I really do thank you all. But um, this is why the people need to understand why the job – is so attractive to head football coaches. So I think Texas, the head coaching job at Texas A&M will be the most attractive job this offseason in all college football, unless uh, a, ran a random crazy firing happens or they get rid of Billy Napier of Florida. I think those are the couple things that happened. Florida seems to be happy with them. Um, so I think you could, you could see him stick around. They might give him one more year, but That'd be the only job that you could argue, you know, argue is a little bit better or the same as the Texas A&M job. 
That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Those of you Aggie fans that are wanting to you know, break down the Abilene Christian game upcoming and break down LSU games, in um, the couple segments on Friday's episode, we will break down the Abilene Christian game. And then same next week, we'll have a crossover with our LSU host. We will talk about the LSU game next week. So we're still going to talk about these next couple football games. We will talk about the bowl game. We'll break it all down. But right now, obviously, as all Texas A&M fans know, our, our attention is fully focused on the coaching search at Texas A&M and who will be the Aggies' next head football coach. Tomorrow, we'll talk about some more candidates for this job. We'll talk about some guys who um, who are going to be in this conversation. Um, I have a name, an interesting name, that is being floated around, but I haven't seen a lot of people talking positively about it, and I think I might lead with that name tomorrow. So be prepared for that. A lot of fun, a lot of optimism should be spreading in College Station right now because I think the right hire will be made. The right hire will, in fact, be made, and Texas A&M will succeed very soon. Thanks for tuning in to Locked on Aggies. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the show on YouTube. And then if you're listening on a podcast platform, uh, review the show helps a ton as well. Once again, thank you all, a and fans, fans of other programs. Thank you so much for being here, for tuning in. It means a lot to me. Everybody have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.